Hey guys, welcome back. I'm bringing a very sad story of eight-year-old Sophia Mason, who died at the hands of her mother's boyfriend, 37-year-old Dante Jackson, allegedly. 31-year-old Samantha Johnson told the Marsad Police Department that her daughter, Sophia, was being abused both physically and sexually by her boyfriend, and the police found evidence proving her allegations. The son the Sun Star wrote, Samantha Johnson, 31, told investigators that her eight-year-old daughter, Sophia Mason, had been living in a shed behind the house the two shared with Johnson's boyfriend, Dante Jackson. The report also states that Johnson told Sophia, said Sophia was being abused both physically and sexually by 34-year-old Jackson a claim that police found evidence to support during the investigation. In a phone interview, Sophia's grandmother, Sylvia Johnson, told Law and Crime that she misses her, always happy and loving granddaughter, who's, who now she has to plan her funeral. For years, she said she had custody of Sophia, but then lost Sophia to her daughter. She said, that in those final weeks before her death, Sophia no longer sounded like her bubbly self, the girl she once knew. According to the Merced Sun Star, Johnson told investigators that the last time she saw her daughter alive was on February 10th. On that day, she told she took Sophia out of the shed to clean the feces covering her body, according to the report. Johnson Johnson left the girl alone in the bathroom with Jackson, the man she knew was abusing her daughter, both physically and sexually, at the time. She reportedly told investigators that soon after she heard a thud. The next day, a sliding door was left open in the home, and Johnson assumed her physically weakened daughter had gone out on her own. Samantha Johnson stated that she believed in her mind that Sophia had run away. This scenario is most parents' worst nightmare, but Samantha reportedly elected not to search for her daughter or report the girl missing. Jackson told Johnson, your daughter, Sophia, does not want to be with you and, and does not want you to be her, don't want to be your daughter anymore. That's what Johnson told the police that Dante told her. It was exactly one month after Johnson last saw her daughter that police officers discovered Sophia's body. After, after days of searching for Sophia in response to an an and at risk missing juvenile report, officers with the Hayward Police Department said they finally located the residence where Johnson was located, was living with Jackson. On March 10th, 2022, as detectives continued their investigation, their investigative efforts, it was determined probable cause existed to arrest Johnson for corporal injury on a child. Detectives also received information on Johnson. Received information Johnson may be at an address in Newark. They arrested her and took her into custody. Authorities said they discovered the missing girl. That is also when they claim Jackson disappeared, launching a nationwide investigation breaking developments and a heartbreaking case out of the East Bay. The search is now on for a man wanted in connection to the murder of a child in the Central Valley. Eight-year-old Sophia Mason from Hayward had been missing for several months and now the body of a child fitting her description has been found in a home in Merced. That body has not officially been identified as Sophia's. Sophia's mother, Samantha Johnson, now being accused of murder. She's been in custody in the Bay Area since Thursday. Police say she was giving suspicious answers in regards to the whereabouts of her daughter. And today, Merced police announced that they're looking, also looking for Johnson's boyfriend, Dante Jackson. He's wanted for murder. 
Investigators say the child's body was found in his home. Last night, sources told NBC Bay Area that Sophia's mother claimed that she had given the eight-year-old away. Sophia's foster family is devastated by the possibility that she could be dead. Periodically, her mom would come in her life randomly and take her away and say she was going to raise her on her own and she didn't need my aunt to do it for her, but she wasn't mentally competent enough to actually do it on her own. Dante Jackson is from Merced, but is known to visit the Bay Area. Anyone who sees him is urged to call 911. Disturbing details about the death of eight-year-old Sophia Mason in Merced. Just yesterday, prosecutors officially charged the young girl's mother, Samantha Johnson, with first-degree murder. Action News anchor Brittany Jacobs shares the new grim information that led to these charges, along with the strict warning from authorities. And we do want to warn you, the descriptions can be graphic. Wind chimes, candles, and stuffed animals still sit out front of the home where eight-year-old Sophia Mason was found dead less than two weeks ago. Documents from the Merced Police Department's investigation, obtained by Action News, contain statements from the mother, Samantha Johnson, to detectives. The statements reveal Sophia's treatment prior to her death. We found uh, evidence that would indicate that a small child was living in the shed. Authorities say Sophia was sexually abused by Dante Jackson. Sophia and her mother were living with Jackson at the time. In the statements made to Merced police, the mother said she removed her daughter from the shed in early February and she was covered in feces. The mother says around that time, Dante Jackson was in the bathroom with her daughter and that's when she heard a loud thud. Sophia's body was found in the bathroom. And right now, authorities do not know how long her remains had been there. It really is just sickening um, to, to hear about this, to uh, see it firsthand. It's, it's not something that uh, I would ever expect to see in, in my lifetime or my career. Uh, I've been doing this 17 years and I've, I've never seen anything like it. Dante Jackson is a suspect in Sophia's death along with the young girl's mother. Katie Gates is the deputy district attorney assigned to prosecute the case. She believes there's sufficient evidence to convict the suspects. Our goal is to bring him to justice and um, the allegations here are very disturbing and very serious. We spoke to multiple neighbors on Barclay Way and they all wanted to remain anonymous, but they tell me they did not see the couple often. I'm here at home all day. Um, I didn't hear anything and that's what's kind of mind blowing that it's such a quiet neighborhood and the little girl wouldn't scream for help or ask for any kind of assistance, you know. She says little Sophia would stop by her house and say hello. Very sweet, but I don't know if she was trying to tell me something. I don't know. You know, I just kind of um, said hi to her and she's like, I got to go now. And she left it's where we should be a little bit more cautious of our surroundings and who live next door to us. Now, this case remains under investigation, but authorities are now asking for the public's help in finding Dante Jackson. So if you have any information about this case, please contact Merced Police Department. Plus, Johnson is set for arraignment on March 28th in Merced. I get it. I'm, I'm with the neighbor. We should be more cautious. This is really sad. And Sam Samantha's mother, Sylvia Johnson, and family says that she suffers from bipolar and other mental disorders. It's the reason why Sylvia had custody of Sophia in the first place. Most of her family, but lost her, you know, this, this is crazy. I don't understand the court system. You know, you take the, you took the baby out of one home to give her to her mother who's homeless and lives in the, that's homeless and has nowhere to live. But the court said that it's not illegal to be homeless and have your child. Okay. Even though the mother suffers from a mental illness. Okay. And to, to know that the family was calling social services, they had called social services a few times and other medical officials had reached out to social services to do a welfare check on um Sophia. This is just extremely sad. Samantha called my aunt and uh, said, I'm going to come visit you today or tomorrow. And this time uh, I won't have Soso, -so, which is what we called Sophia. I won't have Soso -so with me. 
it'll just be me and you like it used to be like it always should have been um not you know not her taking the attention and that's what raised a red flag uh to my aunt and she said where is Sophia going to be where is she would you do with her and at first she just kind of joked around and finally Samantha said um I got rid of her I was tired of her and so you know the question was where where did you you know who did you give her to where is she and she said I gave her to her daddy and we all know that no one knows her daddy and there's no man in the Bay Area or anywhere else that Samantha could identify as the father of Sophia. And so um, that's when uh, Hayward police was called again and a missing persons report was filed. It wasn't only our family, uh, Amy, that that cried out and called out to CPS. There were other um, caregivers, there were medical providers, uh, women shelters, workers that tried to get the message across to CPS that this child is not in a safe environment. Uh, uh, myself, others, we all voiced that we would take Sophia. We all would provide a loving, stable home for her, in addition to the fact that her grandmother was already providing a good home uh, for her. But um, we were met with responses that range from as long as she has a roof over her head or she can't be taken away from her biological mother, even if she's homeless. It's not illegal in California for you to be homeless with your child. You see, this, this is sad. Now I understand why the family has a lawsuit against the social services because they did fail little Sophia and ignore the family and the warning signs. Dante Jackson is still at large. And the, you know, the police is asking anyone with information, you know, to come forward. And he needs to be found. Let's do our best and help the police find this monster before another family is preyed upon. Share this video guys. The family also has a GoFundMe, and I'm going to leave the link to that in the, at the bottom in my description box for anyone who wants to go and help the family. With that being said, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And hit that notification bell so you'll see when I drop new videos. And guys, follow me on all my platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, all at Sister Girl Talk TV. Oh,